Welcome to episode 39. We left off at the branch of the Yggdrasil that leads back to the material plane. Though when we left, Dane was pondering, looking off into the distance, to the north, uphill, to the higher plains, and thinking, maybe there's somewhere else we could visit. The entire universe is at your disposal. Where do you go from here? Sorry, we were talking about the... Is the berry that can, like, heal anything, even death? Yes, the Yggdrasil berry. Mythical, fabled, etc. It is capable of many wondrous things. The least of which... The least of which is healing all ailments and restoring life. Do we want to get the berry while we're here? You know, just run a little errand. Uh, yes, and maybe if we can make our way up to the Celestial Realms, we can get some some badass weapons. Cool. Yeah. What should we do first, then? Weapons or berry? Uh, Wait, so who, who who was the one that told us we can go anywhere? Was it, like, the Odin figure? Or did we just come to that conclusion on ourselves, our own? You came to that conclusion on your own. Because you are on the world tree, which does its branches reach to basically all planes of existence. Hmm. And that's the case, then while the party ponders, uh, we're standing on a giant section, aren't we? Yeah, you're still on the main trunk. All right. Alpha turns and begins digging. Cool. <laughs> Roll me a 1d20. Tell me how well you dig. Alright, I just realized I don't have my... Uh, Five! Guess you're doing it with your... <laughs> Not well. You're chiseling away at some of the dirt er, uh, bark, but you're not doing particularly well. Yay. Can I assist Sorry. Alpha with digging into the world tree? <laughs> sure, go for it. I rolled a 17. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, Significantly Alpha, better let me show you something. <laughs> let me show you something. It helps <laughs> if you, uh, you know, don't just use your hands to try to scoop away at wood, but actually use a tool. And <laughs> you go in and you start, like, chiseling away, and you're making much better progress. He He's like, like yes. use tools. How ironic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've forged for a long time. I know how to carve out wood. Yeah, you do well. All right, so you guys are working your way on that. Uh, I don't even Dane. ask why he's digging. I'm just like, yeah, I'll help you with that. <laughs> it seems like only good outcomes can come from this. Yeah, you guys are working your way at it. Um, Dane, is there anything you wanted to do? No, I mean, I really don't like splitting up the party, so I'll just kind of I'll ask Alpha, um, Alpha, what are you trying to accomplish there? Alpha stops for a moment and says, From what I understand, this tree connects all worlds. If this is the case, yeah. then my world should be this way. Uh. Um... I would think one of the branches or the roots would take you to your world. Not necessarily digging. Mm. They each their own processing. <laughs> and he just continues digging. Okay. I... Uh, here, Al Alpha, roll a religion check really quick. I'm really confused with that. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Uh... Ah, okay. Uh, 23. <laughs> Alright. It, it, As... Religion's one of the few things he's actually proficient in. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, I've oh, yes. never had to use it before, but... <laughs> so, as... You, as Alpha is digging away, he starts to say a phrase over and over again, and you all hear him. Uh, he says, Six feet to Sigil, while the bodies do wiggle. And he keeps working away, almost like a, you know, an old-timey working song. Can 
am I adept enough with, like, music that I could join in with Alpha? I mean, I don't want him to feel alone, like, left out. Like, you might what if he wants someone to... else to share his working song? Sure, we'll do a performance role. Oh god, no, I'm not good at those. Let's... You asked. How Margaret came to like my performance role. Yeah? Oh, I got a nat 20. <laughs> you oh, wow. put it to perfect tune, and Alpha, who is artificial, mind you, is actually kind of pleased and made happy by it. Like... He, he's in shock. He didn't think that he was capable of such emotions, but from you pours this just beautiful six feet to sigil. <laughs> Maybe a little <laughs> tune. <laughs> Apparently, uh, uh, okay, Castros, bad at dancing. Really, really good at singing for some reason. Maybe it was all those songs those hippie druids made me sing. I don't know. Yes, you. It's maybe it's part of being on the world tree. It gave you this like this energy. You feel the natural whatever flowing through you. In fact, it's so good that uh, Alpha's digging improves, and you guys get down and you actually, as the singing is going on, uh, the tree starts to part and open where you're digging, and. Alpha reaches down and pulls a piece of wood out and you see a crack of light form underfoot and he keeps going. Once again, this can only lead to good things. Mm. Just seeing if anyone does no, anything. it can only lead to gone things. <laughs> well, <laughs> while they're right. digging, Ray's gonna yeah. take a nap because this looks like it'll take a while depending on where they're going. So she's just gonna be like, well... Wake me when they're done. I'm just All right. So, Ray, you're asleep. Dane is watching, very confused. And eventually, that light opens up, and Alpha and Ray, you slip through, down, and disappear into the into that light and under the bark of the tree. He's Alpha. Sorry, yes, Alpha and Castros. I forget who is where. I forgot. Ray, you're the sleeping one, and Castros was digging. Yes. <laughs> anyway. All right, so Dane, you were the one that was watching this. You just saw them disappear, and you're next to a sleeping Ray. What do you do? Okay, well, I shake Ray. Ray, wake up. They're gone. Uh... Let's go after them. We're finally rid of them! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. I lost you there. What'd you say? I said we follow them. Ah, you jump in? Yeah. Awesome. Alright, you jump down into this crack, and just for anyone that was watching on the surface, after you go in, it's slowly closes up like a healing wound and begins to bark over. But you, all four, roll out of a doorway and into a narrow street of cobblestone, and as you roll through, the door closes behind you. You find yourself in a place where the things don't quite look right. They're packed very tightly. There's uh, buildings from where you where you can see that almost touch each other climbing up overhead uh, old medieval town style where you know the second floor overhangs the first floor and you look down the street and you see that each direction it curves almost like opposing each other like it's going in a circle hmm. are there any people? oh yes there's all sorts of people from it looks like every imaginable species and clothing type walking around. They're very densely packed, uh, moving their way around you, uh, almost like furniture that's on the street. Hmm. Oh, what kind of what kind of beings are they? Oh, everything you all can kinds. think of. There's a uh, there are tieflings and. Uh, tieflings and halflings and dragonborn and um, 
you name it. There, there's just all a variety of them wandering around through the streets, and none of them seem to be having any issue or out of place. They all just seem to be cool being there. Nice. Okay. Do we see, um, does Dane and Ray see Alpha and Casseroles? Yes. Yep. You uh, landed right next to him. Alpha is up already, looking around, as is Casseroles. They're both kind of in awe at this place. And you guys just kind of rolled out at their feet. All right, Alpha, is this uh, is this where you wanted to go? Nearby. Nearby. Well, I mean, this is the realm, but it's not the exact place. I mean, right. Oh, come on, they're not just a general thing. It's like, oh, I'm gonna go to this whole zone. Ah, we need to have a specific destination. Alpha is currently yeah. on a quest. He wants to find uh, the Great Forge. Ah. Because you guys, okay. you guys were talking about how we need to upgrade, and he's just thinking, hmm, if we have the access to everything, why don't we just go visit Gond? Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. We will, we will follow your lead. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think he has much recollection of this place from his... I'm no, as a spirit, so not much of a lead. No, you would have never been, <laughs> you would have never been in this this specific area. But if you want to look around, kind of check things out, um, you Three tell me what signs. you want to see, and I'll describe it. Um, hmm. I don't know. Like, is there anyone who seems to be particularly open for conversation? Uh, everyone seems kind of busy just moving around you. They they all seem to kind of ignore each other and just kind of happily move. Um, there's various signs on the buildings if you want to read any particular ones. There is there isn't a cross street kind of up ahead that you could go and check out. And, you know, I guess go from there. Guess, yeah, because the, the whole thing is we need to get directions. But it... Right. Dane's usually the better one at getting information from people. <laughs> He's not wrong. I guess, yeah, that's true. Out of all of us, I'm probably the most peoply person, which is frightening considering he's a dwarf with low charisma. Um, all right. We all have low charisma. <laughs> it's not about your charisma, it's how you use it. Yeah, rough bunch. So, uh, so, Dane, so, what do you want me to ask? I can ask people, Alpha. What do you want me to ask them? Oh, well, we must find the Great Forge. Okay, all right. Okay. So, uh, Ben, or, yeah, Ben, is there anyone there that's wearing, like, a leather apron or is kind of soot-stained or anything like that? Let us see. I'm going to roll. Let's see. I'm just going to roll at each 20 and see here. Actually, you should be rolling this, not me. Uh, roll. Right. So I'll uh, we'll do a competitive roll. So you roll a, yeah. well, like a perception because you're looking around, you're trying to see that. So roll a perception check and just so beat whatever I roll. I'll a one d twenty. You roll a one d six. So I'll take a night a mi ni minus one on my side for that. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I rolled in that one. <laughs> Yeah, so no, you do not see anyone. <clears throat> yeah, of course. You're not. looking around. That's each... while you're looking, you ran into a door. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, uh, you look around, you don't see anyone, and you realize, wait, I'm a dwarf. I can't see over the heads of these people that are two feet taller than me. <laughs> Jane miserably, and she is gonna look around herself for anybody who looks like they might have great forges. You know, pretty same. Looking for the same characteristics Dane was, except better. Okay. Well, we must roll your perception. Ahead. Well, that's a nine. <laughs> uh, you don't see anyone. Do you guys just want to start walking a direction and see where yeah. you go? Yeah, Dane's going to grab... Is there a halfling close by? Uh, let's see. Do you want me to roll again for looking for a halfling? Yeah, let's just say you're not going to find one because I just rolled an 18. Oh, but there's so, a whole bunch. You said there's all kinds of beings on the 
thing there. The, there yeah, there it? are, but I figured, you know, you. so you see a few tieflings, uh, some fur blogs, and a asimir, but you didn't see a tiefling. Or a uh, halfling. All right. Um, so Dan's just going to say, uh, Casseroles, why don't you ask the nearest tiefling there, uh, the closest tiefling, to see if uh, they might know where the Great Forge is, or maybe where we can go to ask someone who might know where the Great Great Forge is. Hi, do I find any tieflings around? Do you want me to roll? Uh, well, yeah, please roll. Perception, right? Yeah, you're looking around. 17. You successfully find, yes, there's a couple of tieflings having a pretty good chat as they're walking down the street. And you go up to them and say something. I'm assuming in like infernal, their native tongue. Oh, well, not that. I think I'm just. Oh, well, maybe actually. Castors hasn't seen much tieflings in his life. They're not generally common. They're not around. Back when he was younger, they weren't around. So he's slightly starstruck by seeing more of his people. So he'll like excitedly speak in infernal. <laughs> Uh, and they're just kind of taking it back, like, uh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> what you doing there? <laughs> yeah, so he'll speak in Infernal and ask uh, about the Great Forge. Uh, and you get this kind of moment of pause. Um, forge, uh, Foundry, uh, try the lower ward. And he kind of points behind him. Okay. <laughs> just imagine Castor just says okay and I'm staring at them because once again just he's starstruck he, he doesn't see any other tiefling he's like kind of excited I'm so excited they just kind of carefully push past you just like you Happy. know a, a single hand out and just like okay bye now <laughs> oh, bye alright All right. thanks and then, all right, guys, come on. Way. So he takes them off in the direction of the lower ward. All right, you guys get, well, you start going that direction that they pointed off. And as you pass the first intersection, you kind of glance up it and you see that the street curves upward as it goes. And as your eye follows it, you notice that the city wraps completely around you overhead. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Neat. It's almost In, like a yep. Like a space habit. Kind of. So, right. as you but as you keep walking, you pass by uh, several different buildings. Some of them incredibly ornate. There's a uh, a mortuary that's made out, uh, you know, beautiful mausoleum style. There's, you know, a couple of different what looks like temples and, you know, there's a, an infirmary, there's uh, taverns, there's all sorts of these things all on the ground level, you know, big, beautiful signage trying to get your attention. Uh, all appear to have, you know, housings above them, you know, places for people to stay. And, you know, this place is obviously packed. Okay. Well, we kind of gawk as we're as we're walking by um but dane is kind of looking for anything that might have the symbol of a hammer and anvil or, or something like that something that might indicate that it's a temple of gond or you know well, well or smithies you, looking for smithies as well as you're moving through you first see the mark that you recognize of a foundry and then next to it of a forge. Very likely the mark of Gond. Yeah. So Dane's gonna kinda get Alpha's attention and say, and say, Alpha, does that look familiar right there? Um tough call. Uh would any of this stuff look familiar <laughs> to Alpha? I mean I'm thinking Well, no, just that he recognizes the symbol. Because I would you assume recognize the oh, yeah, it's a, symbol of Gond. I think everything here is going to have the symbol of Gond. 
Not everything, no. Oh, but sure. uh, that particular. Okay, so this one. But there is okay. a. Yeah. There's a gear on the door. Hmm. Eerie. That seems like prominent. a cog. You shall call it Richard. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, since since Alpha seems a trifle distracted, Dane's going to kind of. So is this is this a door on this building, or is it just kind of an open archway? Uh, it's a it's a large door with like a cog as a handle. Okay, so Dane's going to kind of walk up to the door and kind of bang on. Okay, you do your stereotypical boom, boom, boom. And after a moment, there's a little creak open and from inside. Yes? Hello. Uh, We are looking for the Great Forge, and we thought that maybe uh, this, this looked promising. Well... This, yes, we are a great forge. Um, you have something more specific you're looking for? No, not a great forge. The great forge. The great forge of Gond. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? That's a that's a metal of a different color. Come on in. Okay, all right. Well, they seem friendly. <laughs> so we... Uh... I better roll through the door. Okay. He gives you a peculiar look as you barrel nice past Nice to know him. your spirits are, are up again there, Casseros. Mm. Tieflings are cool. <laughs> Alright. So you're kind of in the, the entryway and Alpha, this is where you freeze in awe. There is a big tapestry of basically the Mark of Gond and his gospel right woven in front of you. This is the like antechamber of the Great Forge itself. Oh, so much progress. <laughs> the uh, guy who greeted you says, Now, uh, please wait here a minute. I must get to my master. I will return shortly. And he scurries off through a side door and... A few minutes later, a someone else comes in. Welcome. Uh, rather odd to be sent out here, but, um, well, Gond himself sent me to greet you. Uh, he has a message for you. Now, this is rather peculiar, so forgive me for being a little, um, confused. I normally swing a hammer. I don't, um, uh, have to you know speak to people <laughs> but the uh he wanted me to tell you that the gods themselves you know uh, cannot interfere in the events that are going to transpire in your future and gond is aware of them but uh and forgive me i'm merely a mortal serving in his glory but apparently you are here before things begin, so he is able to give you aid. Oh, that, oh. Is, that is really, really great news, and we are really for humbled technicalities. and honored to hear his message. <laughs> yes, well, I, I have been instructed to tell you that the mas- myself and the other masters of the forge here shall use the divine anvil to weld materials of the gods uh, to create what he is calling the salvation of the world through your hands. But, uh, yes, uh, we need you to collect some materials for us to be able to do this, of course. Oh, that makes better, actually. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Sure. Give us your list and we'll go gather the materials. Okay, uh, this is going to sound peculiar, as some of it comes from various traditions. Now, remember that Gond is the god of the forge for many different peoples, not just dwarves such as yourself, but others that, you know, may forge in his name. So, please understand that while some of these things sound peculiar, they are all important for the items that you will be pro- that we will be making. So, uh, 
first and foremost, you need to bring unto us uh, the baby teeth of the child of Yanar and Narura from the Karasuthra realm. One. <laughs> we, we will also need the eye of Shagas from Krangath. We will need ore directly from Shurok. And finally, from the Tartarian depths of Karsiri, the frozen toenail of a titan. Ooh. You had... <laughs> ah. Well, so shall it be hammered, so shall it be forged. May the successful quench be with you. Well, um, so can you kind of give us locations and, and how we're supposed to get to these various places? Because I'm assuming we're going to be traveling across the plains for the. Yes, I gave you the locations. Each one of those names is the plane of existence you will find these things upon. Okie dokie. Okay. Um, do now, you if guys... only we can find a giant to throw us there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, do you guys have a uh, a map of where the various branches of Yggdrasil lead, and uh, possibly a way for us to get back to that tree? We do not have such things here. We have portals to some of the realms, but not where you are going. For example, if you wished, you could go out to the back of our forge to Mechanus, or perhaps to the Dwarven Mountain. But. We cannot help you from these other locations. Hence why we need you to bring these items to us. Okay. Do you know of a way to get back to the, the, the one tree? You can go there through the Hall of Records. Though I have heard there are portals to all the various realms throughout the various businesses here in Sigil. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, that'll work. Um... Yes, there are more gateways between worlds than you of the material plane care to know about or think about. Fair enough. Um, it would be dumb to suggest we all split up and each get one, right, to save time? Yes. It would be fun, though. I mean... If you survive. Exactly. <laughs> Frozen tunnel from it is not going to be easy to... And that toenail Are you saying you can't wild shape into something and get away fast? Yes. That's exactly. Then just send me for all of it. I'd get it done in five seconds. Die. Nah. How do you know I'm mortal? I haven't died yet. Anyway. So, I guess we will start with the baby teeth. Um. Oh. So... I yank those suckers right out. Do we have any what Karasuthra is? You are in a place you could probably go figure that out. No, I was asking I was asking the guy. Oh. In the Gondi. He doesn't board. He doesn't know. He's uh, okay. just a blacksmith. Uh, more social interaction? Gross. Is there is there a place in this town that kind of has a map of all the different portals to all the different uh, planes. He scratches his beard. Hmm. Perhaps the Hall of Records. They might Perfect. have what you're looking for. Well, we will try the Hall of Records. Alright. So you, you just you walk out and go back to the street, start heading that way. Um, well, I mean, that would be rude. We thank him, or Dane thanks him for his, his time and and assures him that we will be back. And then, yes, I think so. Unless Alpha has something he wants to say. Alpha's too starstruck by the whole thing. Like, It's, it's like, imagine meeting your creator. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. he, that's literally what yeah. he wanted to do, but he's just having a hard time actually processing. It's really what he's actually doing. Got it. Okay. I'm gonna hug on his outfit. Alpha, 
We'll be back. Mm-hmm. He's like, but, but glory. He. On. Yes, and he's, so he walks over to Alpha, sensing the glow of Gond in him, gives the, you know, the predator handshake, the Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers, you know, in the air arm wrestle type of thing. Yeah. yeah. But he holds his hand and says, Your time at the forge will come, brother. May your quench be successful. My thanks. And Alpha just goes by beaming happiness. <laughs> Aww. That's cute. <laughs> Alright. Um, so I asked, so can you point us to the records? He's uh, kind of scratches his head. Uh... I think it's that way. I try the clerk's ward. All right. Well, thank you. Even if it's not there, they should be able to point us in the right direction. Yeah, he doesn't we get out much. Around. We could walk around and figure it out for ourselves. Explore a bit. It's a huge town full of people. Explore a bit. You were the one that was talking about timeline issues earlier. Well, it seems now we kind of have all the time in the world, so... But we don't. Yeah, kind of. We don't. What do you mean we don't? Because right now the the boss being is gathering his strength, and we want to hit him before he becomes super powerful. <sighs> we can never take time to do anything fun, can we? I mean, not on a quest of this importance, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so we take our leave. We head towards the clerk's ward. Okay, you kind of head out, and you're not sure exactly which direction that is, but you start walking. And... No, I guess the guy didn't point us in the direction of the clerk's ward. Well, he wasn't sure which direction to go. Which direction do you guys want to go out here? Do you want to take a left or a right? Flip a coin. Sure. Dane flips a coin. Heads we go right, tails we go left. Alright. What does your 1d2 tell you? <laughs> um, we go left. Alright, you go left. So, this is back the way you came. Uh, so kind yeah. of familiar territory is going back down the street. And you're still in awe of just the sheer amount of people or creatures, I should say, that are just moving through here. As you're walking along, you're kind of reading some of the different signs. You see, like, Gatehouse, the Bottle and Jug, the Hive, you know, Weary Spirit Infirmary, you know, things like that. And all of a sudden, there's behind you a scream and someone running. It's, you know, a small creature probably a oh i don't know you can't tell it at, at, at this distance at first it's a full run maybe maybe it's a halfling you know uh, running through the streets and comes down getting closer and closer you know diving through people and then comes up runs right almost into you you see it is a halfling an older one though you know, maybe in his 50s or 60s. And it's got a scared look on its face. And it gets out in front of you. And then all of a sudden, its feet lift off the ground. And it's frozen in the air. It starts screaming, no, no, no. As a white statue materializes in front of it. Points. And then it's, the statue's eyes glow red. A bolt of lightning jumps from its finger. There is just a scream of pain that comes from the halfling as it disappears from existence in a poof of, well, red spray. The statue then disappears, and everyone just moves on as if nothing happened. Fascinating. Was that the halfling that crashes down in the meteor at the beginning of our campaign? It was a no, celestial halfling, wasn't it? it? Okay. It was a celestial, but no, that was not it. You don't recognize it. 
Huh. Okay. Well, that's just slightly concerning. Um. So, Dane grabs the nearest passerby and says, uh, what just happened? He broke the law. He got what he deserved. Now let me go. I need to move on from here. Uh, what law did he break? I don't know. I don't care. Only the lady knows. The lady knows all. She would not have punished him if he did not deserve it. Okay. Well, anyway, since I have you... Fair enough. uh, Can you tell me where the clerk's ward is? (laughs) Clerk's ward. Yes. Continue this way. You'll read it on the streets. The Hall of Records is at the beginning of the ward. Should be on your left. Now go! Gone from this place. Forget what you have seen. Not bloody likely, but... Okay, thank you, sir. Dane lets him go, and... We continue on our way. You get the feeling as you walk through here that this is common for these people, that nothing is really out of the ordinary. Slightly messed up, but okay. I mean <laughs> We've seen we've seen old ones come to life and and entire races of people, you know, cease to exist. So a single halfling getting vaporized into bloody vapor. Eh. Mm. That's that's what makes it more horrifying, though, is that it's one individual. Yeah, it's a tragedy, not a statistic. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, we've seen the horrors of war, too, so, you know. Those cults killing those people that we were trying to shepherd to safety. Hmm. So, you know. Besides, Castros, what do you care it's halfling's not necessarily of nature. And well, look, this is just a plane of city, so you know. Well, no, it makes me feel as if we mess up here. That might that same fate might befall us. Well, yes, yeah, it's right. gonna be really hard for me to not get into trouble here, because I, especially since I don't know the laws. Right. Well, just don't touch anything. That's why I hate modern societies. Mm-hmm. Too many rules. So let me live in the woods. Do whatever I want. All right. Anyway, so we continue on our way. You Uh, eventually make it to where you see a sign that does say Hall of Records in front of it. Perfect. Nice. All right. We... Is the Hall of Records going to just walk in or is there a closed door that we have to knock on? There is a heavy oaken door with the symbol of a tree as the handle. It looks like a piece of wood carved to look like a tree and then placed on the as the handle of the door. It sickens me. The acquisi in your stomach. It's a tree. You would think you'd like a tree. Well, they couldn't have like actually like grown a tiny little tree to like incorporate with it and keep it alive. No, they're gonna take its dead brother in and carve it into what it could have been. Every other building on this whole street has wooden doors. All right, so Dane just kind of mm-hmm. knocks loudly on this door as well. You, as you knock, you on your third knock, the door just swings open on its own. All right. Uh, Dane kind of pokes his head in. Uh, hello? Anybody home? You see there's a... Inside, kind of a stool with a... Tall, like, nine-foot-tall, very pretty, uh, androgynous-looking individual. Almost humanoid, you know, almost human, but not quite. You can tell is not because of the height and size they look very robust in a long robe as they look up at you yes can i help you uh, yes we are looking for a record or a map of the different portals to the different planes of existence that branch out from this city um, yes i i do have one of those do you Hmm. Just need these planes? Uh, let's see. 
He kind of goes back and grabs a scroll from the back shelf. Brings it up front. And uh, what do you have to trade for this? He seems very kind of disinterested and like not particularly caring of things. Oh, okay. Well, um, what what would you say is the relative value of this? Or what do you usually use for trade? Oh, uh, let's see. I could use some parchment, perhaps a quill, some other, some ink. Um, I'll take some coin I could trade. Anything, really. I, I don't really care. All right. Um, so, let's see, let's find my, um, so Dane, so uh, Dane pulls out a gem, um, Uh, one of the gems it's worth about 50 gold pieces and he says he shows it to this person and he says well what do you think of this will this work mm, yes I suppose that's acceptable um much appreciated as he kind of holds his hand out and it just a you don't see anything it just floats up out of your hand and then over to him and he holds out a scroll for you it doesn't move until the you know the gem falls into his hand and then it kind of floats out of his hand over kind of in your direction okay uh dang uh, catches the scroll out of the air looks at it opens it up looks at it um i'm hoping it's in uh can you read it i'm hoping yes it's all in common and I will send you a image. There you go. Wow. Yeah, it's map that he sends uh, has basically all of the buildings with where the various portals are through those buildings. Though know that everyone is guarded by you know the various uh, factions that protect them. Fantastic. Earth War Party right. Time. Uh, Excellent. So, if I remember correctly, uh, the place that the specific place you were sent by the, the the first one where you have to get the teeth. Yes. I don't think that's actually written on there. It's a sub level of Arborea. Okay. All right. Cool. Um. Well, if I remember correctly. Let me double good. check that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's the it's also known as the Beast Lens. It's in the oh, outer yeah. planes. Yeah, I see Arborea on this. Um I'm on uh this. There's another name for it. Um da, da, da. get out of the yeah. Sorry. looking up stuff. It's time for the looking up portion of our show. Yeah, well, so I didn't mean for this to be a total uh, distraction, but yes, it's basically from where you are at, you have to go to, you know, the first level of, say, of like Arborea, which I'm pretty sure is the one we're looking for. And then from there, that will take you, you know, you can go down to the lower levels. All right, sounds good. And you need to get down to the third level, if I remember correctly, which is where that those two are the 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 the, the two parents, and then there's the child that's you know losing its baby teeth. Got it. Yep. All right. Sounds sounds good. So yeah, as long as Arborea, so Karasuthra 
is in the beast lands. So, um, yes. Yep. So as long as that's part of Iboria, Arboria. I think it, I'm pretty sure it is. I may be wrong, but yeah, it's the happy hunting grounds. That's where you're going. Okay. Um, so we need to go back to the lower ward, um, to a ditch. It's between the Gate of the Clueless and a Shattered Temple. Why? Oh, or you could just go through the Bazaar. You could go through the Great Bazaar in the Market Ward. Okay. I mean, that's the the, the map I'm looking at. That's kind of the way it told me to get to the Arborea. So well, all. but I know. Look at the left side. Left side. Oh, okay. Civic Best Hall to Arboria. That's the I mean, if you hall. want, uh, you can go either way. I just wanted to point it out to you that it was there. Yeah. All right. That sounds closer. So, um, and it looks like it's right next to the Hall of Records. So, okay. Sounds great. Cool. All right. So, thank the, the clerk and back out we go. He's like, yes, yes, and goes back to scribbling down something just rapidly. All right. So we head on out of the Hall of Records and head to the Bazaar or the Civic Festival or whatever it was. So it's the Great Bazaar. Uh, so they started calling it that because it used to just be called a market or the market it started as just the market it was small and then it got so big that it didn't even have a name just a great big the as in the market because everyone knew about it right and you could get and as you approach there's it's loud there's just this massive hustle and bustle and it is noisy and you st- kind of start to look around and you see there is stuff from everywhere and there are creatures from everywhere. There's a what looks like a fire elemental making a purchase of like a little doll. There's a you see a Genasi uh, looks like he's selling lamps of some kind. There's just like everything, every option you can imagine. OK. Um, is Castros on the lookout for odd animals? No, it would feel wrong. Well, not necessarily to pick up as a pet, but just, you know, like different challenge rating animals that you can then wild shape into. Oh, yeah, you are right. I will look for animals. Um, sure. Yeah. You see lots lots of different ones that are very small. Like, you know, one eighth through maybe a challenge rating of one. Oh, so nothing really interesting then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a market where they're selling these things, so they're not going to have, like, a huge beast there. Why not? T-Rexes? Man. This is a lame market. Well, go talk to one of the uh, animal sellers. Complain. I'd like to lodge a formal complaint. (laughs) There should be inverse centaurs in here. Oh, oh! You want Inva Centaur? Come this way. Come, come. I show you. This is gonna end up in a bathtub full of ice with his kidney removed. <laughs> I mean, you... One man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> he takes you in, into one of the adjoining houses and up a narrow staircase, and you hear there's yelling and shouting and all sorts of stuff inside. This is just Castros, right? Apparently. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Castros is by himself doing this. And you see, as you go in, a group of people looking down and they have, you know, coins in their hand and they're yelling. Some of them have little slips of paper. And you see two reverse centaurs that are, you know, bucking wild and kicking each other. And you've walked into, you realize, a ring a ring fight a ring match oh a reverse centaur battle to the death no 
Oh! They shouldn't be fighting and killing each other. This is horrible. Um, they deserve to live. You got what you asked to for. To run free. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not wrong, but... It's not what I wanted. They're supposed to run free and never be spotted by the stupid hippies from my druid group. So what are you gonna do, Casseros? Ah, what can I do? What if I were to disrupt a ring fight? You could try. Now, do bear in mind there's a lot of creatures around here that are kind of scary looking betting on this. And remember, if you do something that breaks some law that you're not aware of, but statue might appear out of nowhere and vaporize you. How would they know? But I can't just watch the inverse centaurs kill each other. It's wrong. Hmm. Well, maybe you can turn into a silver wormling and uh, roar real loud and see if you can scare everybody away. Oh, they might try to capture me and use me in their next fight. No, they might. Let's see. What to do? What to do? Is there like a door in the arenas or just like, what's the scenery like? Uh, it's, I'm trying to think, standard 90s television cockfight scenery. You're standing in a ring around the fighting arena that's down below you. That's why you went up to the second floor. It's like on the first floor and you're looking down on it. Okay. Is there like... Yeah. Any way into for? the ring? Is it like lowered into the ground? Is it just a wall that separates the ring from the audience? Oh no, it's low. It's down below you in the ground. That's what I'm saying. You're like on the level above it, looking down. Okay, into the ring with the yeah. inverse centaurs. Is there any like doorway inside the ring that like the centaurs that, that that's how they get in? Oh yeah, there's a doorway on each side, so you know they can push one out of each side, and that's and then they fight from there. Uh, what to do? What to do? What do I do? Hmm. Well, now we ask the question: Does this in this society is ring fights illegal? Because if ring fights are illegal, then by interfering, I'm actually doing good for the law, not going against the law. Who are you asking? Are you asking the guy that brought you in? No, that'd be a very bad idea. <laughs> uh... Well, you can't. You can't ask. You can just kind of go like. These are legal here. There you go. Yeah. There. Yeah. There we go. Can <laughs> like. I'll ask. Are these legal? Like, oh, these are legal here. He's like, well, of course. Where Where are you from? Oh. Uh. You know, just a different plane. It's not gender. It's generally frowned upon. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I understand. Was very shocking when I first came here from. Crap, I didn't plan on this guy. Uh, let me think. We'll just say he's from like. Oh, he's from the material plane. Why not? He's a migrant. He'll say, "Was very shocking when I came here from material plane myself." Okay, so it's legal here, but I don't want to watch him die. So just turn around and leave. I can't do nothing. I don't want to just let them die. I don't want to watch let them kill each other. It's wrong. Even if it's legal here, it's still wrong to me. Why did I choose now to have a moral compass? Yeah, it's kind of odd. Um, let's see. Reverse centaur should be protected. <laughs> You're a reverse centaur rights activist. Kind of. Ever since I saw that big herd of them, I can't stand to watch them be killed. It's like they're... A, there's a, they hold a special place in my heart. Let's see, what could I do? Many things. Um, you know, summon a couple of challenge two raiding creatures to chase everyone out of the out of the building, or um, well, if these guys look tough, then they're probably gonna fight rather than flee. I wouldn't want to kill people, I guess. I guess because that would definitely be breaking the law. Would disrupting a ring fight, even though ring fights are illegal, still be illegal? Yes. If the ring fights are actually legal, then you disrupting it would be illegal. Dang. 
disturbing the peace. Well, I mean, you are a druid, so, you know, you'll accept that death is just part of a cycle of life, so... But this is man-made death. Reverse centaur death? Reverse centaur made death? Well, still, they wouldn't kill each other in a... a in this kind of circumstance, it's because they're being made to. They're being forced to. It's not right. Uh, struggling. Don't know what do. This is a really hard one to decide. I don't know what to do. I mean, chances are there's going to be guards on, down on either side of the doors because... There's going to be groups of handlers that push the centaurs out in the first place. So even if you were to blast open the gates, there would, they would just immediately get recaptured again. Yeah. And it's might be one of those things where you have to come to the realization you can't save everybody necessarily. I don't... I don't want to save everybody. I just want to save the inverse centaurs. <laughs> I, one, I mean, uh, I don't know that you can really do anything by yourself. Hmm... I guess I walk away, but though it pains me. <laughs> it's understandable. And there you go. Oh, you you do not want to bet on outcome. No. Inverse centaurs hold a special place to me. I don't like to see them be killed like this. Okay, well, if you wait a few minutes, this fight will be over. You can come back for next fight. Different Not creatures. The point. <laughs> but, different, di but different creatures. I, I can go see what's up next. I don't exactly want to watch any creatures kill each other. Not necessarily. No. Only in the wild when they're doing it of their own will and accord. Then it's fun to watch. But generally they don't do it to the death. Well, actually. Just, just tell them you have a pressing prior engagement. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go. A very important quest. You gotta get back to your companions. True. All right. I have to go. Okay, if if you insist, but we have good bout coming up. There are going to be Bublangs and Aurochs and maybe some Allosauruses. Would you would you want to see the Allosaurus, eh? Well, that would be kind of fun. No, the conflicts are real. The conflicts are real. I don't know why, it just feels wrong to have them be forced to fight like this. How do you know they were forced? What if they chose to yeah. do it? You know, like the gladiators of Rome. Not likely. I think most of the gladiators, well, I mean... Most of them were slaves, yeah. Oh, a good portion, but... No, hey, it was... <laughs> Being a gladiator was so popular at one point, even the Emperor was participating, they had to start making rules to stop nobility from going in and getting killed. Man, that would be kind of fun, though, if you're one of those commoners that's been downtrodden all your life, you become a gladiator, and you get a chance, you get a shot at a nobleman. I bet, I bet there are some times that they kind of enjoyed that. You guys are not helping. Yeah, what if what if this is one of the reverse centaur, you know, as a lowly downtrodden plebeian getting a chance to take out a bourgeoisie reverse centaur? Sure if they have those kinds of hierarchies, but I guess I wouldn't know enough, would I? Just <sighs> It's just class warfare on a different species. <laughs> I think the main thing is that I believe that creatures, if they're going to fight at all, should be should do it in the place that they love most, which is their natural habitat, rather than surrounded by all these people betting on the outcome. How do you know that they love the natural as to habitat who is the most? Drawn. Maybe they prefer the captivity. <laughs> you don't see a lot of you don't see not a lot of sure. people being outside. Like, man, I really enjoy not having clothes and shelter. So much better. Animals and humans are different. What if they're smart animals? I would say there are quite a few animals who would rather be out, out caged cages. Then I just think of the humble chihuahua that would die in a natural environment. We're not getting into a giant <laughs> argument over captivity or not. <laughs> no, not at all. But anyways, 
Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that- because I'm trying to think of, like, why Castros in character would feel that it was wrong to witness ring fights, but I think that is it. Just... It should be... <laughs> yeah, if creatures are gonna fight each other, it should be done of their own accord, not forced into a situation. Yeah, they should fight for, like, mating over the, or the best meal or exactly something like that. Not fight to the death or the enjoyment of stupid civilization. Ooh, what if the winner of this reverse centaur bout, though, is the one that gets to mate? I'm not sure if that's what they're doing. You're not sure it's not the same, but that would make it okay. Mm. Exactly. I think I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the best. Yeah, so... Just gonna go. But... Just to be clear, you don't have any, like... Fun creatures for sale or anything, or... Well, actually, wait. Allosauruses. If I witness an Allosaurus, I could turn into it, couldn't yeah. I? Yeah, yes you could. Alright, I'll come back for the Allosaurus fight. Well, I guess okay. I don't want to watch more of it. <laughs> He's like, okay, well, uh, come back in like an hour. Yeah. But he wonders, like, what you mean by, you know, a fun monster because they have all sorts of op options out there. Hmm. Specifically the Allosaurus, I guess. I don't remember the other monster creatures he said were battling. Oh, he just said a bunch of random ones. Uh, yeah. Just because there's, yeah, there's a bunch of them that will be going in. I believe there was like a burbling at one point. Mm. Yeah. What's a burbling? Mm. Uh, they're a... They're an aberration, kind of a neutral, evil, desert-dwelling, kind of like a vampire bat that's huge. Uh, think uh, Dobby with wings. That'd be kind of cool. I, I guess I'll stick around for it then, but I should probably tell my party members where I am. <laughs> Maybe, just yeah. a thought. Probably a good idea. Alright. Huh. Go back outside and find one of my party members <laughs> all right you're looking around do you where were you guys during all that um <clears throat> dane was just kind of trying to find the, the portal so um well let's see um you know being at this place is so huge uh, he probably would have asked for someone to volunteer to stay behind and wait for Casseros while the other two went off and looked for the portal entrance. Okay. Who stayed behind? Ray, I guess. Alright. So, Ray, you're, you're chilling. You, uh, as you're hanging out there, let's see. You, uh, you're, you're standing kind of like you know, looking around, and as you do, a L a, a, a kind of fancy dressed, very pale skinned elf comes walking up to you, and uh, well, uh, don't see many of you elves around here. I could say the same. I haven't seen an elf in years. Well, I guess this is quite the chance meeting then. Would you uh, like to go get a cup of fresh tea? I hear the fur blog over there makes a hell of a uh, floral blend. That depends. Is this tea gonna have something extra to it? You know, such as booze? <laughs> uh, well, he is a fur blog, so I'm confident that we could get him to add quite a bit of the. Uh, fire water if you would hmm well I should really be spotting for my friend right now but eh, it's just right he, over there he hasn't done me any favors lately sure why not awesome 
Uh, you uh, Fair enough. walk over and let's just do a quick check of this Furblog's place. So the, you know, it's not the best service. He has a hard time talking to you. He's really trying his common out, doing the best he can, but it's, you know, he's slow and takes a while to get the order and come back out. And then when he does, let's see. Ooh, it is the best, best cup of firewater tea you've ever had. It is like the hot toddy of firewater tea. Uh, I rolled a nat 20 on the flavor. Oh, wow. Is that not the worst place I've been to? No, in fact, you are shocked at how good this is. And you, you actually can't hold back the joy of drinking this. And your companion is just smitten. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna start a conversation with this elf. So, uh, what you doing around here? Oh, I, I trade. Trade all sorts of things from all realms. Anything particular you're looking for? Particularly at the moment, but I always have my eyes open for anything that I could add to my artillery. Well, noted. I like to, uh, work with a variety of weapons dealers as well, so artillery, not a problem. <laughs> what his definition of artillery is. So. I imagine his character being uh, a lot like Nicolas Cage in Lord of War, but, you know, being like in the body of uh, the Lucifer guy you told me about last week. From the anime. Yeah. Stop bringing him up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I was trying to find a reference. I, my point is, because he's like, that's like a, a traditional Tolkienian elf, you know, like they're beautiful, right? Lucifer is very beautiful. <laughs> exactly. So this guy, he's like a, a light skinned elf that's pretty, and his character, he's like a dealer. He's basically like lo- the Nicolas Cage's character in Lord of War. Hmm. Yeah, we haven't seen that movie. Really? Oh, you yeah. should watch it. It's actually really good. In fact, just the first five minutes of it is just incredible. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Funny. I mean, his his movies, it's kind of 50-50 mm-hmm. whether it's really good or not so much. So, especially it's, lately. It is honestly the best depiction of international arms trade that I think I've ever seen. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't really know what to talk about with this guy. He just kind of approached me, and I'm oh, that's pretty... fine. Roll a, uh, roll a 1d20 really quick. Tell me what you get. Add your uh, oh, performance. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay. All you got to do is beat my roll, so go ahead. 18. Oh god, you nailed it. Earl the thirteen. So <laughs> So you actually do great. Despite not really being sure, you guys eventually hit it off. The two of you are Yeah. You're yeah. it's an excellent midday date. How about that? Nice. You yeah. Ray thinks to herself in the back of her own mind. You know, I did promise Alpha that I would help him research baby making. Huh? <laughs> Remember, Alpha's seen the baby making. He just has not seen the baby delivery yet. Well, yeah, I mean, I could, maybe I'll keep this elf's number. You know, after after we save the world. You know, maybe I might sell down. All right. Well, after a little bit, you see a kind of distraught looking Kasros go wandering by in front of the shop. That that's my buddy right there. Uh he doesn't look too good. Uh, the the, uh, the elf jumps up. Well, I understand if you must go, please uh take my calling card. And he hands you uh what looks like a piece of leather that's been worked with his like name and some like information scrawled on it with what looks like a bit of mm, 
almost like gold thread woven into it and a single little gem of some indeterminate, you know, type. Fancy. I'll take the card, you know, take good care of it. He seems to be pleased by this. He's quite happy about it. Alrighty. Well, as much as I would rather stay in the company of this fine young gentleman, I guess I'm gonna go see what's up with Casros. Alrighty, you walk out and you run into Casros, who is just still a bit shaken by what he's witnessed with the reverse or the inverted centaurs. Hey, Casros, uh, you don't look too good. What's up? Uh, rain fights are illegal here. Long story short, uh. But, uh, it would be nice to see some new creatures that I could turn into, so I think I'm going to stay for a bit and watch the next few battles. Just let the team know where I am. Alright, we will do, I guess. It seems to me like we're not going to leave soon. In fact, we, I would suggest that we stay in this town for a bit, gather some resources and everything. Take a break. But yeah, I need to... I'm just going to stay here for a little bit. Probably right. think my, about my life choices. Alrighty, well, <laughs> I'll find Dane and Alpha and tell them what's up. Alright, well, you do that. Caspers will head the other direction. And then let's check in real quick. Alpha, what are, what are you up to? Are you staying with yeah, He's Dane? been kind of following Dane around, just trying to, you know, explore a little bit. But he's too awestruck to be really good at doing much else. So, he's just kind of yeah, following Dane. Okay. Alright, so Dane, what are you up to? So, Dane's just trying to... He's just kind of getting the lay of the land. He's, um... So, he's he, obviously, he wants to find the portal to the to the Arboreum realm. Um... So, he's looking for somebody that he thinks might... Okay, here, how about this? He's just going from kind of stall to stall, asking if uh, any of the merchants there know where the portal is. You don't seem to get any real responses uh, for quite a while. You're kind of getting fed up, and eventually you roll an intimidation check. All right. <laughs> Another one of these that never go well. Serious? Oh my god. Ugh. Four. <laughs> Very intimidating. Yes. So you try to sound intimidating to a what appears to be a smaller creature who then stands up to twice your height and laughs at you and just points away, like, go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured. Yeah, just... Ugh. Anytime Basically, you have uh, to make an intimidation check or a charisma check, it's just... I feel like one of us needs yeah. to get some good charisma going. Because seriously... No. I need, just, I need to roll something that's not an attack. But Well, actually, it's more along the lines of whenever I have to roll something that doesn't have some kind of a buff to it, it's never yeah. good. <laughs> Fair enough. So, alright, you... Oh man, just laughing. All right, you, know, you eventually you stumble along until you actually see a. I I'm trying to think of how to describe this. It's kind of like, kind of like a centaur, but it looks like a tiger. Okay. Or maybe a a lion, perhaps. Weird. Is it? possibly a manticore it's not a not a manticore it looks more like like if you were making a centaur out of um out of a lion all right got it yeah uh in fact let's call it a lion tar that's a good way to okay. call it i like that so it's like four big strong legs on the ground 
going up to a humanoid like torso, but then it still has like a lion's head. Oh, weird. Okay. So it's like a sphinx. Yeah, kind of. Okay. So he catches your eye in particular. He's over talking to uh, what appears to be uh, another one of well, his his people, though there doesn't appear to be the large mane that he has. Could be a female, could be a close relation, like instead of a lion tar, maybe a tiger tar. Now I'm just making up words. But <laughs> Okay. So Um What, so I kinda of stumble upon these these beings? Well, they catch your eye, yeah. They're a few booths down kind of the way, and they definitely catch your eye. All right. Yeah, I guess I make my way towards them. All right. You walk your way over towards them, and he kind of slowly turns and looks at you. Help you there, Shorty? Yes, uh, I am looking for um, the portal to the Arboreum realm. He takes a couple of steps around and squares up to you. And what would a dwarf want with my homeland? Um, we need to actually make it to uh, uh, Karasuthura. We're on a quest for Gond. Hmm. He ponders and looks at you kind of eyeing you up and down your quest is taking you there you know it is a dangerous place yeah figures yeah um doesn't surprise me our quest so far has taken us the length and breadth of several planes so it's just it's just another day for us <laughs> I like you. My name is Rakish. Nice to meet you, Rakish. I would be happy to take you. I would be happy to take you with me. Are you going alone? Or is this uh, strange creature following you coming with? Uh, He's coming with, and actually we have a couple of more companions that are going to join us. Um, A druid and a ranger. Oh. I like druids. They tend to be rather good people. Yeah. Fun to have a fu- fun and fun at parties. That this, that part is true. This this uh, particular druid would definitely be fun to have at a party. Excellent. Well, go find your companions. Tonight you may feast at my palace. Well, uh we're very honored, Rakish. Uh we will be back with our companions. And, you know, onward and upward. Okay, so you start walking the other direction. Ray, you're walking towards him. Let's do a quick... I'm just curious. I guess, uh, let's see if the two of you meet each other. Is anyone's passive perception over 15? Or at 15? 15 or over? Are you... Yeah, Dane's is only 12. Ray's is 15. Ah, well, Ray, you spot them. They don't see you, but you spot them. Alrighty. Good. I'm gonna approach them and be like, Hey guys, uh, what, what are we gonna do now? I found, uh, got cast Dane's roots. like, ah. You don't have me, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm, yeah. I know where Casteros is, uh, he's keeping himself, uh, occupied, I guess. Yeah, okay. Well, let's go uh, Let's go collect them. You can't collect me. You <laughs> can't collect you, I guess. Alright, well, they can they, you go look get for get all of the options. <laughs> Say, you can go look for him. <laughs> Hopefully you'll find him. Yes. Yes, we know where he is. We'll get him. Well, Ray kind of knows. He didn't actually say specifically. Well, yeah. <clears throat> oh, well, I mean, 
it was in that building, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, Castros came wandering out and told Ray what was going on, but it wasn't just like very specific about it. Well, you guys know what building I went into because you left Ray there to watch for me. Oh, right. yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Okay, good. It's getting kind of... <laughs> All right, so... If I'm we just go making back... sure you gotta keep the you gotta keep track of everything, you know. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so we go back, uh, enter the building, and kind of follow the noise. Awesome. You know, you go upstairs, single file up a narrow stairway. You go in and you see Casseros kind of horrified but unable to look away of just a couple of Allosaurus, you know, ripping at each other. All right. Well. So how big are these Allosaurus? Well, from your perspective where you're at, they look to be about medium creature size. I'm assuming at some point I glance over and see them and I just turn and go, This isn't what it looks like! <laughs> <laughs> and Dane says, It looks like it's this plane's equivalent of a cockfight. Well, so it, it, yes. It, well, yes, it is what it. it looks like, but it's not what it looks like. <laughs> I'm not what I look like. I, I don't condone this. I'm just getting more wild shape options. I swear. All right, Castro. We believe you. Well, you have the option now. An option of what? Well, that was the whole point. Was Caspus was viewing the Allosaurus so he could become one. Yep. So I guess if Castro wanted to, he could turn into an Allosaurus and chase everyone out of the building. I'm not going to. I wish I could, but for once I'm going to make it the smart decision. I have not gathered enough information yet to be comfortable enough to make a bold decision like that. Okay, well, uh, Castros, uh, looks like we found someone that's willing to take us through the portal into the uh, Beastlands realm. So uh, he's invited us to dine with him tonight. He says he likes druids because they're good at parties. I look balefully up at Dane. I'm just like, yeah, good at parties. That's definitely me. <laughs> no, kind of is. I've only been to like one party. <laughs> that was with a bunch of people who were stuck in time. Anyway, uh, so shall we go? I suppose so. All right, so. Uh, we make our way back to where the lion tars are. All right. You find them up on that kind of, I guess it would more or less be the far east side of the bazaar, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you see him. Oh, hello, my friend. Thank you for coming back. Oh, a tiefling. You must be the druid. Interesting. Why interesting? Well, let's just say a tiefling druid is uncommon. Yeah, fair enough. But to be fair, nature is the only thing that's treated me right, so... Excellent. Well, it'll be nice to have some guests. Now, before we go in, uh, just so you all know, we do only have some simple laws. So please follow these. First... Thou shalt harm none. Second, thou shalt not use magic upon the streets of my kingdom. Third, thou shalt not take that which is not thine. And fourth, thou shalt behave with honor. Does this include the, uh, uh, Karasur, um, Karasuthra? What? No. Just... Within the where we're going, to Tarna, my kingdom. Okay, okay. Perfect. Sounds great. Did you uh, employ a king? 
once you go down there, I don't care what you do. <laughs> Got it. So no magic, no mean? hurting people, no stealing. Got it. <laughs> Just when you're in, like, the city, his area. Yeah. This okay. is like old school kingdoms, like city states. Would wild shaping be considered magic? Yes. Uh, I. Hmm. What if I argued that it was a disorder and I had no control over it? <laughs> well, you can ask him. Innocent on reason of insanity. Well, just ask him before you go. Is, is uh, wild shaping? Where does wild shape fall under your jurisdiction of no magic in your streets? Oh, you, you as a druid, uh, we consider that just an innate part of who you are. It is acceptable. We just don't You're want kind someone. Of person. We just don't want someone going around firing off fireballs or ice bolts or you know any of those other things. You know what? That's fair. Magic can be unpredictable. I know what you mean. Yes, yes. Well, that is probably why they passed the law in the first place. So, yep. Please. Come. It is. Uh, I am getting hungry. There. So I guess we follow him. Alright, you walk through a kind of a, a little alley which goes to a doorway and he pushes it open and steps through. It's large. It's like eight feet tall and four feet wide. And, you know. As you go through, you're blinded by a bright noonday sun uh, you know as opposed to the dim lights of the bazaar that you'd been dealing with and it is blue sky and clear and it's just like you're in oh, what would be a good example uh, like Egypt or you know something like that it's just you know bright it's hot it's clear there is a dense jungle all around you except where you step out which is a, a obviously constructed stone pad, and you look down across the way to a palace that has on the hit top a lion, like the Sphinx, but it's a lion's head with two large figurines, one at each side, holding spears as guards, massive stonework steps all over. It's almost like a hybrid between the uh, Aztecs and the Egyptian architecture styles. There's a body of water uh, that extends out to the left with uh, docks and boats and activities all around. And he proudly looks and he points down to kind of the, the largest of the building and says, Come, we shall meet with my family tonight is a feast night. That is why you are welcome. May we all eat meat and be merry. All right. We are honored. Cool. Well, you guys start going on the walk and you can tell that the jungle is like ever trying to encroach here. So they're constantly having to fight it back and hold it away and they he takes you down across the uh, kind of the promenade there and then up and the stonework is strangely immaculate it's you know hewn and smoothed and Dane as a, uh, a dwarf you would be you know sh you're almost shocked this wasn't dwarven craftsmanship the way these stones are all built together without mortar, they all are, like, perfectly cut. Oh, yes. Very fine craftsmanship you have here, Rakish. We... Thank you. We often are looked down upon because of our body shape. The outsiders do not believe that we are capable of such things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you uh, you go inside and sure enough, there's the carcasses of a couple of large uh, grassland, you know, uh, herbivores laid out that are being cut and feasted upon by the creatures here. Some are going over to a great fire 
and laying out the meat on uh, what looks like cut slabs of wood that are roasting it uh, in the open flame. Others are taking certain cuts and just eating them raw. Everyone's just kind of chatting. There's a couple of people that give sideways glances to this party that has just entered, but most don't seem to really care. Nice. Um, your your host goes takes you over to some of his friends and says, "Look what I met in the market." And points to Casros, and he says, "Can you believe it? A tiefling druid." Hmm. And what do his companions say? They just they're like, whoa. That's amazing. They're kind of in shock and they look at you. They're kind of nodding their head like, that's really cool. And then one of them, and what about the elf? I'm a ranger. Ooh, nice. You'll do well here. And what is that strange one that looks as if he was carved from a tree? Fa just raises his hand and says, Hello. (laughs) (laughs) they're all just like Rakish this is this is truly incredible they were just wandering around the market like yeah yeah they he came by he's apparently looking to go to the you know the lower realms that's just what they call you know your destination here because to them it's you know couple layers below them and uh and they're just like oh uh okay well have you talked to them about the king no 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 uh let's let's bring that up tomorrow for now uh let us let us share with them our, our bounty guess guess would you uh would you like something to eat why, yes. Yes, what? we would. Yeah. I mean, what do you have? You have boots. We have boots? What? Booze. Oh, booze. Yes. Yes, they have their own their own form of drink, which is a... It's a flowery beer. The best way I can describe it. It's... They ferment a grain and then harvest the local wildflowers and put it in it, so it gets a really floral flavoring. Hmm. Casos isn't sure about how he was being gawked at. He doesn't know if he likes it or not. Okay. As for animals, you just recognize, you know, some of the large prey animals you'd see, like, on the African savanna, like, you know, some, what is it, some ibex, and, uh, you know, the, the herd animals, if you will. Yeah. So still nothing really of interest. I'm hoping they don't expect me to do anything. I'm sure it's not required, but uh, they do expect uh, druids to be fun at parties. I know, so I'm like, uh, how do fun at party? (laughs) Well, what did he say about the wild shape? He said it was fine. There you go. Well, I'll have to read the room first. You know, once the party gets up these stuff. And honestly, that is kind of what I need right now. Just to go a bit crazy. No drinking, though. I'm still gonna refrain from drinking. Alright, well, the rest of them, you know, they kind of have a party. They're, you know, they're drinking, they're eating. They offer you the meats. Uh, unless you want to prepare them yourself. But prepare the meat ourselves? Nah, it's fine. I can eat it. Okay, well then he just walks over and he, he pulls some off of one of the the roasting planks and hands it over to you. He says, yeah, this is spiced from the local vine that grows right outside my bedroom. Ooh, local nature. Mm. Yes, and the meat in fact, so, let's, so let's it almost ahead. reminds me of like raw meat, like that fresh kind or. Of. Oh yeah, it's it's yeah, 
like drug through a warm room, you know. Mm. It's like a cool wild in... shape. Okay. This is... If you go to eat it, I rolled a 19. <laughs> ah. <laughs> like, that's how good it's going to be. <laughs> nice. Because you're right, a wild shape would probably be the, the best thing to be a party animal. <laughs> um. I wouldn't know what to wild shape as or if it would be appropriate. Well, I mean... Who doesn't like a big cuddly bear? Mm, I can do my bear juggling act! There you go. Do I think I juggle? I'm sure you can find some coconuts there. Are there coconuts? Not coconuts, but how about guangos? It's like a half guava, half mango. It's like oh, That works. Alright. Wild shape into a brown bear, I guess. Awesome. You wild shape into a brown bear. I'm just giving it to you. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, you just do it. You wild shape into a brown bear. And he's like, hey, check it out, everyone. The druid's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so easy to please people here. It's a nice breath of fresh air. Uh, then he'll grab the... And I'm assuming you had told someone that you were going to juggle? Yeah. Cool. So he'll start grabbing Gwangos and throwing them at you. Roll a performance check real quick. Oh, God. Come on, performance! <laughs> oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> That's a two. <laughs> so he, he tosses them at you, and you're like, I got this! Throw me more! And you throw them up, and they all come down and splat you one at a time. Whack, 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 right in the head. And kind of squish. Uh, to recover, I do, like, a ta-da pose, you know, like a clown, and make it act, like, make it look as if it was all part of the act. Roll another performance. <laughs> <laughs> a reaction performance. Uh, yeah, I hit up against stuff. Oh, I got it. I'm trying! Oh, no. Uh, four. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled the nat 20 earlier. Yes. So, are, you do I'm that. You, tr you try to look intentional and they all just are like, oh, um, sorry. I, you Should we take you down to the water to wash off? Right, without missing a beat says, well, I guess they just fell out of his bare hands. Wah, wah. And you hear their whole room just... <laughs> The whole room erupts with laughter. <laughs> All right, saved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll wave them aside, like because I can't communicate as a bear, so I'll just wave them aside when they offer to get cleaned up. I'm like, nah, nah, and I just start licking the guava juices, the the guango juices. You know, like a cat almost grooming, but you know, we're not gonna waste fruit here. Awesome. Well, everyone seems to kind of just move on. You go over to the corner, licking yourself, and everyone just kind of like, well, that was interesting. <laughs> sure was. What else can a bear do? That'd be fun. Now I'm determined to be the set, the like, the, the party animal I was meant to be. Balance on a ball. Uh, right. You can go out to the steps and. Oh yeah, there's ba ba ball balancing. I was thinking you could go to the steps and like grab your ankles and do one of those bear rolls, like you're rolling down a hill. I don't care, but what if I knocked into the table if I failed the performance roll? Oh, if you go outside okay. and you failed, the worst that would happen would be you fall into the water. Ooh, wait. What if I told them to get, like, a, like, they probably have, like, plenty of, like, just, like, giant, like, almost, like, like, a animals roasting on spits, you know, like a pig? Uh, nothing's <laughs> roasting, like, nothing's on a spit, it's, there's a, the carcass is on the table. Okay, I was gonna say, like, if it hasn't been carved yet, I could carve it as a bear, like, with, the, like, a claw attack. Okay, yeah, you could always go up and, you know, like, claw off a piece of meat. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. Because I'm like, that doesn't require a performance roll. That I can manage. Maybe you could look for a unicycle and try and ride it. That's a performance. <laughs> <laughs> I need something to regain my dignity that's not something performance. Something skill-based. Try to climb a tree. Uh, 
Sorry. It's uh, t- too bad you you can't communicate as a bear. You could totally pull an Andy Kaufman and you know just stand there and read a book. <laughs> what can a bear do? Can smell. Uh, oh, oh. Well, Castros is trying to find out how to be favorable. A uh, favorable. Ray is just gonna start chugging beer. Okay. You feel really good on this beer. It, this is much better than what you're used to. Yeah. You weren't sh- yeah, you weren't sure about the flavor at first, but you feel warm and tingly and you just want to like, you know, pet the lion's mane and, you know. There. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of start hanging around Rakesh just petting his soft mane, just like, oh, pretty. I mean- Pretty but kitty. She has like an elf metabolism, so I would think that it would take a lot to make her do that. Yeah, read about Egyptian water lily beer. <laughs> Pretty strong stuff. It, uh, yeah. So yes, she she does have the elfish metabolism, but she starts like getting feeling really good. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Hope uh she doesn't insult Rakish there. Oh no, he's he's fine with it. He's kitty. He's a noble. He's just like whatever. All right. Um, Dane's just uh, going to town on the different meat. He's just he's got himself a full sample platter going. Awesome. And Alpha, what are you up to? Alpha's is kind of ex- like observing because he's not familiar with these people and stuff. It's not like he has to eat or drink. I mean, he can, but he doesn't really need to. Is he going around saying, do you know of the glory of Gond? More like, so tell me, how familiar are you with Gond? I've, like, we met your, uh, this this creature in the Gondian market. Do you tell me more of your affiliation with Gond? And they all just kind of are like, what? <laughs> And you you get, you know, some stories from from them about you know, how their people are the chosen the chosen ones. They were established here by the goddess Sekhmet, and most of their beliefs are shaped around that. You know, kind of the Lyantar people as a whole, or you know, followers of the goddess. Pretty fascinating. You do find out through these conversations that many of them have a belief that the female lion tars are more rational and make better decisions than the male lion tars, and that they also see themselves as superior creatures to humans and other races. Makes sense. Humans are so squishy and prone to exploding. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Oh, oh yeah. Has to ask if uh, their babies explode as well. That's they. They tell you that part of their superiority is that they never explode. Oh, fascinating. Um, I thought of something. Could I do a druid dance as a bear? Because I've done. I've I've executed proper like druid dancing like um meditations before. So maybe I could do it this time, but in bear form. I, I don't even know what a druid dance is. Well, it's like, I've, I've done them before. Oh, okay, we'll do it. I will. What role would that be? I, I think it's performance. You're performing a druid dance. <laughs> you know what? I'm going for it. Do it. Eh, ten. You do that. Yeah, it, I mean, it's... It's not your best, but they, they're like, oh, look, a dancing bear. <laughs> yeah, good enough. All right. <laughs> As a bear, just after he finishes, finishes dancing, he's just like, yeah, good enough. It just goes to the seat in the corner. <laughs> no, I like this, though. This is where the, like, you know, the end music plays and the, you know, the camera pans back on this dancing bear and a bunch of lion tars. And, you know, it's. 
it's kind of a, a positive, uplifting end. And we pick up next time with you meeting the king. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so literally right before I rolled for the performance check, I rolled a nat 20, and then right after I rolled a 19. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, I know. We're first here. So what? I need That's a magnifying fun. glass before we leave. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Just like, before we start off on our next journey, I need a magnifying glass. What for? A spell. Sunbeam. Oh, okay. It shoots from my palm in a 60-foot line, and it does what? Uh, 68 radiant damage, and the target wow. is blinded. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to... I have the ability to learn, like, two spells, but I think I'm going to wait a couple of levels until I get up to, you know, a third spell slot, and then I can actually learn two new spells. Mm, nice. I'm that right now. But I get three attacks per turn now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, Ray is turning into our resident tank. I think she has the most hit points. Really? Yeah. And Castros can now become... Yeah, six. Yeah, Dana only has 74. Jeez, that's crazy. I know. I have 69. Heh <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Castros can now turn into an Allosaurus. Haha. Yeah, that would Which be is pretty fun. awesome. I don't think it would have. Well, medium beast, maybe. It's actually large. So, I'll, I was gonna say, like, what if it didn't fit? But yeah, I guess. Um... Well, but if, uh, if like, the Allosaurus is, like, a normal occurrence at those ring fights, then they've probably seen it before. But I guess the bear would be just as normal. Ah, whatever. It'd be almost fun. You could amuse yourselves by chasing around the, uh, Lion Tars kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would have been fun. I don't know. <laughs> probably not. This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening. Your beard's fine. It'll grow back. <laughs>